These two high school kids are geniuses. In order to develop a filler fuel for rockets, they mixed sugar and potassium chlorate and heated them together. As a flame rose in the air, the two of them looked at each other. But then the teacher came over. In a panic, they poured the mixture into the sink. Who knew that the next moment, a female student threw a match into the sink. The whole lab was filled with smoke. Now they were sure of the fuel's feasibility. They arrived at the launch site in high spirits. However, the rocket was off course when it lifted off. They even nearly injured a passerby. No one could have imagined. Later on, a couple of high school students with nothing to lose would actually build a rocket. And the United States of America was not capable of doing so in the same year. If you have a dream in your heart, you must be patient and read this story. I'm sure it will energize you. Homer grew up in a remote and lonely coal mining town. Coal mining was the destiny of most of the people here. Anyone here who talks about a side hustle that has nothing to do with coal mining, it's bound to be condemned. Homer didn't want to spend his life digging coal like his father. His greatest desire was to get out of the mine, but it wasn't easy to get out. You have to get a scholarship for every sport you play, that's how you get accepted into college. Unfortunately, Homer didn't have his brother's athletic prowess. Homer lost every school football game, and despite his unyielding attempts, he couldn't make the cut. His father convinced him to join him in the mines when he graduated. That way, he could at least make a living. After all, you're not cut out for sports. The workers next to him even teased. You don't need any talent to dig coal. No matter what people say, Homer didn't want to spend his life here. But there's no better way out right now. Not to mention the fact that his grades were a mess. That night, the world's first satellite appeared in the sky, until the crowd dispersed. Homer was still staring up at the sky in fascination. At that moment, the seed of a dream took root in his heart. When he shared his dream with his family, he was ridiculed by his brother. Only his mother comforted him, but Homer didn't lose heart. The next day, he filled the charging cylinder with gunpowder. But just as he lit the fuse, something happened. Hearing the noise, his mother mistook it for a mine cave-in. She rushed out of the house. She was furious when she saw the fence blown away. Because of her inexperience, Homer came to the library early the next day, looking for books on rockets. In a town that only cared about coal, Homer's search for a book on rockets was a needle in a haystack. Homer was disappointed. Quentin in the corner caught his eye. He was a loner but he excelled in school. All his classmates thought he was a freak. No one wanted to be around him. A sidekick even threatened to cut Homer off if he ever got involved with a freak. Homer didn't give a damn about the stairs he got for building a rocket. He headed straight for Quinton, and when he mentioned something about rockets, he didn't realize how interested he was. Quinton's understanding of rockets amazed all the students. The two of them got to talking, and before they knew it, they had formed a strong friendship. With Quinton on board, Homer's rocketry journey began. He brought his buddies to his basement. The men were divided into groups each with their own responsibilities. I don't know how long it took. A model rocket was born, made of iron pipes and broomsticks, but the welding of the final nozzle was a problem for them. This was the most crucial step for the rocket to take off. Homer had no choice but to sneak in and ask Dyson, one of his father's co-workers, for help, but he turned him down flat. If his father found out, he'd be fired. But then Homer told him about his dream. Dyson risked being fired and finished the weld. The next day, the guys looked at this beautifully welded rocket. They couldn't wait to get it into the air. But then the principal came up. The principal came up to us and demanded that the rocket be destroyed as a hazardous material. But the science teacher, Riley, showed up just in time and told the principal that she had brought it. For the science fair, the principal didn't ask any more questions. Homer was very interested in what MS Riley had to say about the science fair. Quinton poured cold water on him. The science fair was for rich kids, and there's a lot of money in scholarships. There's no way we'll ever get a chance. Mr. Riley, However, thought it was a terrible idea, and explained that this year's winners would not only get to go to the National Science Fair, all the major colleges and universities will be rushing to offer scholarships, and we should all strive for that opportunity. After listening to his teacher, Homer's eyes lit up. He rushed after the teacher to ask if the scholarship was real, but the teacher told him with a haughty look on his face that it's not for you. You can't get out of this town by just thinking about it. Mr. Riley seemed to despise Homer, but deep down, he hoped it would inspire him in the opposite direction. That day, the men couldn't wait to test the rocket. They named it the Puffin. Homer lit the fuse with great anticipation. As the men watched in anticipation, the rocket of their dreams took off. But in midair, it veered off course. It was headed straight for the mine. The boys were so scared. They ran for it. Homer was the only one who was worried that one of the miners might get hurt. He raced toward the mine. But his father was waiting for him with an angry look on his face. When Homer arrived, he was scolded by his father in front of everyone and warned him that he would never be allowed to work on rockets again. He threw his dream in the trash. Back home, Homer complained to his mother that his father had gone too far. If his brother had made a mistake, he wouldn't have been so abusive. In his eyes, the coal mine was more important than his family. Homer's father heard all of this. He came in and said with a serious look on his face, Of course you don't know how important the coal mine is to me, because you're just a kid, but you'll understand later. Homer retorted that he'd never work in a coal mine again, and after a little argument, 
Homer went down to the basement to check things out and found that all the materials for the rocket were gone. He ran out the door in the rain and picked up his belongings in distress. The scattered materials looked like the dreams he'd had trouble picking up since the puffin failed to launch. The partners had lost faith. They felt their fate was sealed. Even if there was a miracle, it wouldn't come to them. Maybe being a competent miner was the way to go. But Homer thought the opposite. He said angrily, coal mining's all right, and you're just going to waste your life away as a drunk, and that opened up a can of worms for his partner. The two men got into a physical altercation. They were interrupted by the honking of a car. It was a young man who stopped to ask for directions. He's about the same age as them, but he had a luxury car and a girlfriend. This created a big gap in their hearts. Homer was angry and went off on his own with the materials to find a new base, but before they could get far, hitchhiking to catch up with his buddies, in order to avoid the embarrassment of the fight, they got out of the car and put their hands in their pockets. Then they went to home and apologized. After an eight-mile trek, they found an open field, and although they were physically and mentally exhausted, but the sight of the ideal sanctuary in front of them had taken away all that fatigue. The men set up the banner of their dream in the middle of no man's land. Though the whole town laughed at them, they finished building the observation room and the launching pad. No matter how hard the road ahead is, Homer wouldn't give up so easily. He knew this was his only chance to change his life. In chemistry class, he and Quinton worked on fuel ratios, seeing the flames rise in the air. The two men knew they had done it. They couldn't wait to get to the base for the third launch. But this time, the rocket's trajectory was off again. It flew into a crowd of onlookers. Homer rushed to apologize. Surprisingly, the man wasn't angry. Instead, he was thrilled that he was once a pilot. The moment the rocket flew, it was as if he had reminisced about the time when he flew in the air. With his years of experience, he realized that there was something wrong with the bottom of the rocket, and suggested that they use high-temperature resistant steel. But money was a big problem. They had no choice but to use abandoned railroad tracks. Together, they managed to pry off a section of rail, but then the sound of a train rumbled not far away. In a panic, they put down the railroad track. They ran in the direction of the train. They tried to stop the train, but it was a false alarm. The train eventually moved on to another track. With the new material, Homer went back to Dyson to get help with the welding. But by then, he had disappeared. Homer found out from his co-workers that his father had transferred Dyson out of the company. Homer had no choice but to learn to weld himself. The rest of the team was preparing for the next test flight. But the next test was worse than the last. The rockets that used to be able to fly were now only able to do so in mid-air. Some even exploded on the spot. Undeterred. They went back to the rails to buy materials. But every experiment ended in an explosion. After analyzing the many failures, Quinton hypothesized that the explosion was caused by an air bubble in the fuel chamber. After a lot of research, a viscous fuel is again available. Everything was ready. They're ready to fly with confidence. This time, Mr. Riley was there to help. But when they arrived at the base, they found the place full of people. It turned out that many of them were sent by their brother to watch the joke. The pressure was mounting on them. If they failed again, they would be the laughing stock of the town. Mr. Riley reassured Homer that he didn't need to prove anything to anyone. Your courage is better than any of them. With great trepidation, Homer set the ignition. The rest of the gang rushed back to the observation room. When everything was ready, Homer pulled the trigger. Everyone in the room watched the rocket's movement. Unexpectedly, the rocket did not deviate from its trajectory or explode. Instead, it carried their indomitable spirit straight up into the sky. All the hard work of the day and night had paid off. Those who laughed at them applauded from the bottom of their hearts. Mr. Riley was even more proud of them. But Homer's efforts were never recognized by his father. Today was his 18th birthday. His mother had knitted a sweater for him. She kept hinting when his father came over. And then she pulled out a piece of mail. Homer was shocked when he opened it. It was an autographed picture of Dr. Rocket whom he admired, and while he was so happy, his father told him that he had no time for his own work, when he could be learning how to mine coal, one after another. Homer ran out the door. He came to Mr. Riley's. Mr. Riley had a birthday present for him. It was a book on rocketry. In the face of this hard-earned gift, Homer promised his teacher that he would study hard, and the principal, who was passing by, saw it all. He seriously reminded Riley that teachers are supposed to teach, not tell them how to do daydreams. When Homer got home, he found a stranger. It turned out that his brother had gotten a scholarship to college for playing football. After congratulating his brother, Homer locked himself in his room. He wanted to be his father's pride and joy, and he wanted to escape from this lifeless place. A few days later, Homer found his father to watch him launch his rocket, but his father refused, citing work as the reason. Homer was puzzled and asked his father, why do you never miss your brother's games? but you always say no to me because of work. Homer's voice left his father speechless. The afternoon launch drew a huge crowd. Even the girls formed their own cheerleading squad. My mother was there to make up for my father's absence. With all eyes on him, Homer pulled the ignition switch. Mother's mouth dropped open in amazement. The rocket was more advanced than ever before. People were staring up at it. It's been too long since they've looked up at the sky. The success of the launch attracted the attention of reporters. They were on the front page of the newspaper. They became the talk of the school. Suddenly, 
The principal approached with the police. Mr. Riley rushed into the office when he heard the news. At that moment, they were already handcuffed. The police had found a rocket in the forest and concluded that they were responsible for the fire last week. When questioned by the police, Homer and the boys didn't have an explanation because one of their rockets had disappeared after launching and they were arrested in front of the whole school. Since they were minors, their parents bailed them out. The father reprimanded Homer for being a disgrace and his partner was beaten by his stepfather on the street. But Homer's father was able to stop it in time. There was a cave-in at the mine that night. Homer braved the rain to get to the mine. After hours of rescue, family members couldn't hold back their anxiety any longer. They broke through the fence and cried with their loved ones. But Dyson, the welder who helped him, lost his life, and his father lay on a stretcher. That's when one of the workers told Homer, if it wasn't for your father, a lot of other people would be dead tonight. He stared into the mouth of the mine in front of him and became even more disgusted with the pit that would never see the light of day. Although his father's life was no longer in danger, but he can't work in the mine for the time being. Someone must take his place now. Otherwise, the mine will take away the house and the furniture. In order to ease the burden on the family, my brother offered to take his place in the mine, but then he couldn't get a sports scholarship and he lost his chance to go to college. In order to protect his brother's dream, to protect his brother's dream, Homer insisted on carrying the burden. It seemed like he was born to be a miner, and that's what his father wanted him to do. Then Homer and his buddies went to the base where the dream had begun. He set fire to the alcohol and destroyed all the facilities. All the work that had been done night and day was now reduced to a cloud of smoke, and he realized success is only achieved when the dream is realized, when reality disperses the dream. It's only called growth. Then he came to the school to withdraw from the program. Mrs. Riley was even more disappointed in him. She turned away from Homer's greeting without a second thought. In the morning, before dawn, Homer followed his fellow workers to the mine. While all the men bowed their heads in habit, he was the only one looking up at the stars. The satellite that had awakened his dreams was still shining in the sky. As the elevator descended, the distance between him and the sky was getting further and further. The blood in his heart gradually cooled. Here the workers had to work hunched over. Homer finally realized how hard it was for his father. From time to time, his buddies would come to visit him at the mine. Homer showed them his muscles. It was the best thing that had ever happened to him. The guys thought he'd given up on his dream a long time ago, but no one noticed the sadness in his back as he left. Soon after, his father came home from his illness. He thanked Homer for the sacrifices he'd made for the family. He wanted him to go back and finish school, but Homer said he didn't want to go back to school. His mother's face changed instantly. She urged his father to try to persuade Homer. Mother was frantically trying to get father to talk to him, but father said he was a grown man. Besides, it's good to dig coal with me. Mother was so disappointed in his ideas. She left the table in a huff. Father returned to the mine as soon as he was cured. All the men complimented Homer on his work. Seems his son had a talent for coal, but he didn't notice a thing. Homer's eyes had become vacant. When he came home from work that day, his mother told him the devastating news. Mr. Riley was seriously ill and had a short time to live. Homer rode his bike to visit him. He didn't realize that she was still optimistic in the face of death. She was worried about Homer's future. She patiently counseled him. We shouldn't blindly listen to other people's opinions. We should follow our hearts. You shouldn't be buried in the mines for the rest of your life because you have a greater purpose. I just want you to realize that no matter what choice you make, I'm proud of you. In fact, Homer was already confused about the choices he had to make in life. The teacher's words were like a light in the darkness. When he got home, he couldn't sleep. He took out his teacher's gift of rocketry books again, and a steady stream of ideas came to him. He found the altitude and the range and began to study them. After days of research and calculation, Homer finally figured out the general direction of the rocket's fall. He immediately took the results to Quinton for help. He pushed his way into the bedroom where he was still studying late at night in a small space. When he saw the results of Homer's calculations, Quinton was amazed. After a night of calculations by the two of them, they finally figured out where the rocket had fallen. The next morning, they went to the deserted base. They carefully measured the distance with a rope. They traveled from the jungle to the meadow. Until noon, they finally found the remains of the rocket in a stream. They carried the rocket to the school immediately. Homer did his math in front of the principal. He was once considered an underachiever. Now he was using math to figure out the rocket's trajectory. The students were in awe of him. When they arrived at the police station, they realized the culprit was an aviation flare. Now the truth has come out. The principal realized that he had misjudged the boys. When he left the station, he told Homer to report back to school. He even recommended them to be the school's representatives at the science fair. They went back to the basement to get ready for the upcoming tech fair. But then their father showed up with a stern face to see them go back to work. Father drove the boys home and convinced Homer to go back to the mine because he had done so well in the mines. That made his father so proud. But Homer's eyes were determined. His father tried to say something else, but he couldn't. It seemed that his son still couldn't accept the life that had been planned for him. That day, the science fair was held as scheduled, and they were crowned champions. They would also represent the school in the National Science and Technology Competition. By now, 
they had become the pride of the town. At that moment, the principal came to inform us that because of the school's limited funds, only one of the four could compete. No doubt, the boys left the responsibility in Homer's hands, but just as they were about to leave, the workers at the mine went on strike. Father was furious and called them ungrateful, and just as he reached the window, a bullet burst into the house. The family was in a state of panic. For his father's safety, Homer urged him to quit his job at the mine. What he got in return was a reprimand from his father. He couldn't stand his father's paranoia about the mine any longer. His long-suppressed emotions finally erupted. His mother watched in silence. She seemed to realize it was only a matter of time before her stubborn husband broke her son. The next day, his buddies put Homer on the shuttle bus to the science fair. The science fair brought together the best of the nation's scientific community. When Homer displayed his rocket, Homer's rocket drew a huge crowd. He explained how the rocket worked. He told them about his original nozzle technology. Some of the contestants were even talking about the possibility of his rocket winning the championship. Homer listened in rapt attention, but when he arrived at the booth the next day, he was dumbfounded. All the entries were gone. What about tomorrow's final judging? He called his buddies for help, but in order to recreate the models, he'd have to use the machines at the mine, but with the strike at the mine still going on, and they couldn't get in there to do it. Soon their mother found out about it. She risked her son's dream by walking through a crowd of protesters, and begged her father to help Homer by threatening divorce. There was a look of disbelief in his eyes, but the mother was adamant, and in the end, his father gave in, and he took it upon himself to quell the strike. The workers went back to work, and worked through the night to make a new model for Homer. Mother called to tell her son, that your stuff is packed and in the mail. Homer was so happy when he got off the phone. For everyone who is struggling, the support and recognition of their family is the ultimate strength. At the final competition, he patiently told the judges about his idea and his production. When the award judges read his name, Homer was in a state of shock and disbelief. It wasn't until the second time his name was read, he was sure he wasn't dreaming. All the hard work he'd done along the way, turned into cheers and applause that echoed through the hall. All the famous schools threw him an olive branch, they wanted to talk to him about scholarships. Homer's mind went blank at the sudden surprise. All he knew was a handshake and a nod of thanks. A man in the crowd congratulated him. It it wasn't until he reacted that he realized it was DR. Rocket. But it didn't matter. I'm sure we'll see each other again. When Homer came back to town, full of honor, Homer was greeted by the same cheers and applause. After an emotional hug with his son, your father still hasn't shown up. Homer wasn't too concerned, but kept asking if Mr. Riley was here. When he found out that Mr. Riley's condition had worsened and that he was bedridden, Homer immediately rushed to the hospital. Despite the pain and suffering, MS, Riley still smiled and encouraged Homer to persevere. Looking at the medal in Homer's hand, she said, I'll brag to every student that I brought you up. Homer didn't say anything but held back the tears that welled up in his eyes. On the way back, he found his father at work. He invited him to watch the rocket launch this afternoon, but his father still refused, citing work as the reason. He even teased him that he heard you met your hero, but you didn't recognize him. When he heard his father say that, Homer turned around and came back. Although he and his father did not see eye to eye on things, but they both had a strong belief in each other. In Homer's mind, his father had always been a hero, and the coal mining town that he lived in, and there's no difference between mining coal and building rockets, they're both fighting for a dream, this will be their last rocket launch, named after MS, Riley as a gift to her, the crowd is now several times larger than usual, Homer took out his medal and thanked everyone who had helped them, and even thanked MS, Riley, who couldn't be there, but then her father appeared in the crowd, Homer's face was in disbelief, he excitedly approached his father and invited him to launch the rocket, his father nodded in embarrassment, as everyone in the crowd counted down to the end, his father pressed the launch button, the rocket, carrying dreams and hopes, shot up into the sky, everyone looked up at the October sky, this is their desire for the future, the father looked at his son with pride, and finally understood his persistence, the moment his hand fell on Homer's shoulder, the gap between father and son had vanished, and that's the end of the movie, this is a movie based on a true story, years later, Homer became an engineer at NASA, and the rockets he designed flew into the universe, he was born ordinary, but he was never mediocre. The road to his dream is full of thorns, but fearlessness can be realized. Sometimes a dream is enough to light up the sky. But before that, please don't forget what the sky looks like. That's all for today's story. I look forward to meeting you again.